Okay, so this is Article 440. It's 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 horrible. 440.10, motion to vacate judgment, says that any court that entered, I guess, that where the judgment was, the court can vacate such judgment on the ground that, and then it gives a list, one court did not have jurisdiction. Two, arrest, misrepresentation, fraud. Three, material evidence was false. Four, material evidence was procured in violation of defendant's rights. Five, mental disease, disease or defect. Six, improper prejudicial conduct and not appearing in the record. If it had appeared in the record, it would require it would if it had appeared in the record it would require a reversal of the judgment seven new evidence discovered which could not have been produced by a defendant at the trial even with due diligence on his part and creates a probability that the verdict would have been more favorable to him next uh dna testing this is after a guilty plea so the guilty plea one is you need a substantial probability that the defendant was actually innocent for DNA thing after a conviction after trial, it just has to be a reasonable probability that the verdict would have been more favorable. Nine, judgment obtained in violation of constitutional rights. Okay, so the first one says material, the other one said material evidence um, was obtained in violation of his right. This one is just saying that the, con the judgment of conviction was obtained in violation of his... 10. Prostitution thing and the victim was a victim is this claiming is a victim of Lee of like sex trafficking. And that had to do with I guess the federal law because it's talking about the Trafficking Victims Protection Act. Trafficking Victims Protection Act, United States Code, Title 22, Chapter 78. Uh, provided that a motion shall be made with due diligence after he ceases to be the victim, subject to reasonable concerns for the safety of his family. So basically like they're gonna kill your family in China, you may not be okay with doing this, but then they have, you know, the, uh, they get like shut down somehow and now you're gonna try to get this conviction for prostitution reversed. So official documentation of defendant's status as a victim of trafficking or compelled prostitution or trafficking in persons at the time of the offense by a state, local, federal, government agency shall create a presumption that the person was a victim. Sub two says that the court must deny the motion to vacate. So there's only four of these. So hopefully maybe they'll give this list instead of the other list. The ground or issue raised upon the motion was previously determined. So res judicata, however the hell you say that. Uh, subdivision two says that notwithstanding the provisions of subdivision one, the court must deny this motion to vacate. There's a list of four in this section, so it's a little bit better. Hopefully they go here for the question. Okay, the ground or issue is previously determined on the merits upon an appeal from the judgment, unless there has been a re retroactive change in the law since the time of the appellate determination. Two, oh, if there's already an appeal pending, um, Okay, so the one interesting thing on this is that I think there, I, I honestly can't get myself to read this crap for more than 35 seconds at a time, if that. Probably closer to five seconds. So I think what they're talking about in 440 30 sub B is they're talking about DNA evidence and the court can deny the, that, you know, like the guy wants to have some evidence, piece of evidence tested for like his DNA. And the court can just deny this um, if it's not based on the defendant's actual innocence. So you actually have to say, I'm actually innocent and that's why I need this DNA test. Or, or the defendant has not presented credible allegations and the court has not found that such property, if obtained, would be probative, to, would be probative to determination of defendant's actual innocence and that the request is reasonable. So I guess the request has to be reasonable. Okay, and there's apparently like a five year limit on this, not including the time that he's in custody. So you gotta make this motion within five years and the five year period is told while the person's actually in jail. So there seems to be some kind of five year tolling thing on this DNA thing. Okay, so then it goes into when he took a plea of guilty. And there there's a thing about like, should he have requested this before he took the guilty plea? 
and the court shall consider whether or not he had the opportunity to request it and unjustifiably failed to do so. Okay, so the five year period can also be told if the court finds defendant shown extraordinary circumstances preventing the timely filing or that he's been pursuing his innocence as diligently. He's been suing, pursuing it diligently or the court finds totality of the circumstances thing and the court still agrees to do it. The court on motion of defendant may also issue a subpoena due to when they issue this order for the DNA or the property or whatever it is. <laughs> this is subdivision two. It's, I think it's still, yeah, it's still 440 subdivision two and this is another list. This is the longest fucking subsection, I hope to God. Okay, so if it appears by conceded or uncontradicted allegations or by unquestionable documentary proof, there are circumstances which require denial, whatever that means, the court shall summarily deny the motion. If it appears that there are circumstances authorizing but not requiring denial, um, the court can go proceed on the merit. Upon considering the merits of the motion, the court must grant it, oh, must grant it, without conducting a hearing and vacate the judgment if, and now here's another list, three things. So this is when the court has to, without a hearing, grant the motion. A, the moving papers allege a ground constituting a legal basis for the motion, and B, such ground, if based upon the existence or occurrence of facts, is supported by sworn allegations thereof, and the sworn allegation of fact essential to support the motion, either conceded by the people to be true or are conclusive, conclusively instantiated by unquestionable documentation. Will they say unquestionable documentary proof? So you need all three of those, you need legal ground and such ground if based upon facts is supported by sworn allegations of the facts and the people are not contesting them or there there's documentary unquestionable documentary proof 